Today, Montgomery County health officials announced that starting on Monday, shoppers will be required to wear face coverings. Hi. In grocery stores and pharmacies. I think it's a good thing. I mean, it's probably, you know, you have to do what you have to do. Everybody's being respectful or afraid, and uh, I think they've gone out of their way to really make it safe. Several cities are following Miami Beach in ordering a mask mandate. The city of Miami just making their announcement this afternoon. Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser is directing all grocery stores and food markets in the city to require customers to wear face masks before entering. Places like, well, San Bernardino County, wearing a mask in public is not an option. It's required and strictly enforced. How are you? Most people out and about in Carson tonight are wearing masks. Many say requirement or not, they're not leaving home without one. We're joined now by NBC News contributor Dr. Joseph Fair. He studies viruses for a living, worked in Africa during the Ebola outbreak. Dr. Fair, good morning. I want to zero in on this issue about the masks. What is the data, what's the science behind this new requirement? This is really based on, you know, two or three studies, both coming out of China, Iceland, and here in the U.S. that anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of infections would be what we call silent infections or asymptomatic. So the mask is not to protect yourself because, you know, we don't want people thinking it's going to keep you from getting infected, but it's to keep you, if you are asymptomatic and you're falling in that category of a silent infection, from transmitting it to others. So we know that that is a major cause for the explosion in cases that we're seeing here in the U.S. And so having a mask on physically keeps those droplets from coming out of your mouth and onto someone else. If you're, and I should emphasize, a mask does not mean that you shouldn't social distance. So if you wear the mask, that will physically keep others from getting the virus coming from, you know, literally out of your mouth. But you can use handkerchiefs, you can use anything that you can tie around your face. You know, we're particularly emphasizing this in places like grocery stores, pharmacies, places where we have no choice to go, but where you are going to be in close proximity to others. Do you think it should not be mandatory? No, I don't agree with it. I, uh, to be honest, if we know that 25 to 50 percent of infections are silent or asymptomatic, I think just like a lockdown, there should be a nationwide mandate that we all start doing it. Uh, and again, we're getting this data after talking with China and other countries that had a lot more cases early on. They were able to lower their numbers by people actually wearing masks and not transmitting the virus to others. Putting a mask on yourself is more to prevent you from infecting someone else. And if everybody does that, we're each protecting each other because the data is it's, it's more efficient to prevent transmitting to others than it is to prevent transmission to yourself. When you're out in public, you're at a grocery store, you may be infected, you may be spreading the disease, but have no symptoms at all. And it becomes really important that you want to be put on that mask. Uh, because as Dr. Fauci said, we're all going to get through this together. Dr. William Hazeltine, he's chair and president of Access Health International. He designed the strategy to develop the first treatment for HIV AIDS. And last fall, he chaired the U.S.-China Health Summit in Wuhan, where this all began. You know, I think uh, for a number of reasons, it's better to wear a mask when you go outside. First thing, it protects, if you are infected, it gives some protection for people around you. It's also a psychological effect. That is, if you're wearing a mask, you're going to be more aware of your surroundings. You'll be more aware of the danger that you can be infected or possibly infect others. And then finally, it prevents you from touching your face, which is one of the major ways you can be infected. So there's a number of reasons uh, that we should wear masks as we go out. Um, I think, as the president said, where it's not forever, but it is now. Let me just say what's happening around the world. If you look in Austria, you can't go into a shop anymore if you're not wearing a mask. It's against the law. Also, if you look at what happened in Italy, at first people thought you were nuts if you were wearing a mask. Now they think you're nuts if you're not wearing a mask. And in China, it's more of a sign that you respect your fellow citizens. So there's a lot of reasons to recommend uh, wearing a mask. Jeremy Howard is a distinguished research scientist at the University of San Francisco. Mr. Howard, the WHO initially said you only need to wear a mask if you're taking care of a person with a suspected COVID-19 infection. How did they get it so wrong? 
Well, we now know that uh, about 50% of people that are infected have no symptoms. Uh, we also know that during the first week is when people are most infectious, when they're least likely to have symptoms. So what the WHO did here was that they did not err on the side of caution. They weren't quite sure of the science, and so they said, don't do it. What they should have said is, do do it. Here is the cloth cover that I am using. I don't know if you can see it. When I wear it, am I doing so to protect myself or to protect you? Primarily, you're doing it to do your bit in the community to protect others. We know that this disease spreads when we talk. Little droplets fly out of our mouth, so small you can't see them. It just makes obvious sense, and the science shows any kind of cloth cover stops that. It's actually been estimated by Yale researchers this week that each person wearing a single mask has a value of at least four to $6,000 due to the huge impact it has on transmission. There's some stunning data that you have provided me represented in graphs. I'll put it on the screen showing South Korea side by side with Italy. Pretty self-explanatory, but please provide the background. Well, the really interesting background is that until late February, a lot of folks in South Korea couldn't get masks, and they were also con continuing their kind of cultural approach of only wearing masks when they had symptoms. Everything changed in late February. The government stepped in and ensured that everybody had access to a mask. And you can see what happened. Before that, they were on track with Italy to be as bad as Italy, and then suddenly everything turned around. And now, the number of cases there is decreasing without even a lockdown. Every country with enforced mask usage shows dramatically lower death rates compared to countries not using masks widely. The beach, the city of Miami Beach, has ordered employees and customers in stores um, to wear masks and facial coverings. That's as of Friday. If you don't do so, you're protecting those. You're, you're putting at risk those around you. And if you go out and see somebody else not wearing a mask, they're putting you at risk. This, this disease is a silent assassin. So the closest we have right now to a kind of imperfect vaccine is to cover up your face. The, the advisor on this to the WHO says this might be even more important than distancing, but that's how important this is. So it's not enough for you to do it. You need everybody in your community to do it, and that's why we need enforcement on this. If we hit a magic number, the number is 80%. If 80% comply, modeling suggests we can actually kill this virus off. What does your review of the data from around the globe show as to the issue of cultural difference or even vanity? I know that you looked at the Czech Republic. Right. I was really surprised to find that actually there's lots of examples now of countries that have gone all in on this and are in the West. Israel, it's, a, it's the law. Czech Republic, it's the law. Austria, it's the law. Um, Slovakia, it's the law. And like in the Czech Republic, not only is it the law, they are so proud now to wear their masks. If somebody is behind you in the, in the shopping line to do your weekly essential shopping and they're not wearing a mask, in the Czech Republic, people will look at that person now and say, why aren't they doing their bit? Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Chris Martinson, and I'm here to tell you how we're going to beat this coronavirus. I've been reporting on this coronavirus for 70 days. I have a PhD in pathology from Duke University, and I want to take you through the logic of why everyone should wear a face mask. It begins here. So let's imagine this woman here. She's got a perfectly normal temperature, but she can have the virus and be communicating it. And here's how you get this virus. Somebody who's infected gets a particle outside of their body, and that goes into your body. And we know that very large infectious droplets fall out of the air very quickly. Smaller ones travel much further, but really tiny infectious droplet nuclei, they, they travel really far. And so they, uh, these can form and they are super small. So they just blow around in the air. I'm going to show you a little bit about that. It's not just that somebody who's sneezing or coughing is passing this to other people. So how do we beat this thing? Very simple solution to a very complex problem. Everybody wears a mask. Here's the logic behind that. Reason one, I'm going to give you three reasons why everyone should wear a mask is, number one, it stops infected people from expelling infectious particles. Remember these things up here? We want to keep those particles not out in the air. We want to keep them inside our mask. So let's look at the difference here. In this GIF right here, we're seeing somebody who's sneezing just into the air. Look at all those particles flying. And then, yes, there is still stuff sneaking around the edges here, but look how much material got caught in the mask material itself. Here's another great piece of research that came out very recently. This shows the tiny particles that are being spread around when 
people are just talking. You see big particles falling out. You see little ones floating around. Every one of these is a particle that could be carrying infectious disease particles, viruses in there that could make you sick. So reason number one, everyone wears a mask is so that the people who are sick are not spreading infected droplets all over the place. Reason number two that everyone wears a mask is it helps remind you not to touch the insides of your mouth or your nose. So what we need to know is that I hate this saying, don't touch your face, because you know why? Because the virus doesn't come in through your face. It comes in through your mouth, and it comes in through your nose. And it's also possible it can come in through the eyes. But a mask, at least, if you're wearing a mask that covers up this part right here, you are not breathing those particles in to the places in your upper nose where the virus can bind or down in your lungs where the virus can also bind and begin replicating. That's what a mask will do, prevent you from touching the inside of your mouth and your nose. What's reason number three? Reason number three, really, really important. Look, if somehow these little particles get out and if you get one of those little particles inside your mask, uh, you will still get ill potentially. But if you are infected anyway, you have a much, much better chance of starting small. That is with a low inoculum and that gives you a much better disease outcome. Small amount, both small and large amounts of virus can replicate within our cells, cause severe disease in vulnerable individuals, such as the immunocompromised. In healthy people, however, immune systems respond as soon as they sense a virus growing inside. Recovery depends on which wins the race, viral spread or immune activation. Virus experts know that viral dose affects the severity, the illness severity, viral dose. So in the lab, mice receiving a low dose of virus clear it and recover while the same virus at a higher dose kills them Dose sensitivity has been observed for every common acute viral infection that has been studied in lab animals, including coronaviruses. So that's reason number three. It gives you better odds of a lesser illness. If you do get a tiny virus particle through your mask, it will come in, but it'll be tiny. It'll be a small dose. That increases your odds. So the three reasons everyone wears a mask, it stops the infected people from spreading it around. It helps prevent you from touching your mouth and your nose in particular. And if you do get infected anyway, much better odds that you're starting small with a low inoculum, and that gives you a better disease outcome, a better chance of fighting it off. I want you to tune out all sorts of illogical articles out there that say things like this, which is, uh, well, you know, even, even masks that fit well against the face. We need these right now for the medical frontline healthcare providers. Don't get these. Let's leave these right now. Later, when supplies come back and they're ample for everyone, these are the best. But what do we do until then? Wonderful cottage industry of people making their own homegrown uh, sewn mask, home sewn mask here. Here with a, an insert of a HEPA filter, you can find these face masks and uh, uh, all over the place. People are making them, donating them. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that's happening here. So this is how we beat this thing. We join together, we create face masks, and we always, always, always wear a mask in public, whether we think we're healthy or not or don't know or we're sick. Any reason at all, when everybody's wearing a face mask, we will beat this thing. Is masks for all. That's the number for masks for all. Go to masksforall.co. You see it on the screen there, and you'll see how to make your own mask so that you don't take a, a masks away from hospitals that need the, the special ones. Um, text that word to 50409, and that will send a message to your legislators and your governor demanding mask for all executive orders. So we need to make sure if you're going to be safe in your community, go to your shop and demand that they have a no mask, no service policy. That's going to keep you safe.
Here's how you can make your own face covering in a few easy steps with items you can find around the house, like an old scarf, a bandana or a hand towel, or you can make a face covering out of an old t-shirt. Fold it to the middle from the bottom, fold it to the middle from the top, fold it again to the middle from the bottom, and again from the top, and then two rubber bands, one on one side and one on the other side. Then you fold either side to the middle and you have yourself cloth face covering. It's that easy.